Welcome back. Malawi's Electoral Commission has begun distributing ballot materials to polling stations ahead of next Tuesday's presidential and parliamentary elections. The materials will be moved from the capital to more than 5,000 polling stations across the country. The commission says slightly more than 6 million people have registered for the vote. The process will use a mix of manual and electronic methods. While the voting will be paper-based, the transmission and final tally of the ballots will be electronic. This is the first time the country will use the system. Commission Chairperson Jane Ansa says the country is well prepared for the elections, which she promises will be credible. Now, Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa has thanked Nigeria for the support in the efforts to deal with the aftermath of Cyclone Hidai, which devastated parts of the country in March. Nigeria's Foreign Minister was in Harare to deliver 20 tons of medical supplies and a gift of $500,000. He had delivered a similar package to Mozambique and Malawi. Medical supplies and 20 tons of these have been handed over to the Zimbabwean government. 35 tons went to Mozambique, which was worst hit by Cyclone Idai, and 30 tons went to Malawi. Each country got 500,000 US dollars from the Nigerian government. Of course, I came to deliver on behalf of President Mohamed Buhari um, the sympathy uh, of the Nigerian people uh, to uh, His Excellency and the people of Zimbabwe uh, over the cyclone. Uh, and the devastation and tragedy that befell this, uh, this country. To the people of Nigeria, I say the people of Zimbabwe are extremely happy and uh, grateful to uh, the support you have given our people under the circumstances now. It's not only Zimbabwe they are supporting. And my brother has told me that uh, they have been to Malawi, they have been to Mozambique, and again, supporting uh, those uh, two countries, sister countries of Zimbabwe, Malawi and uh, Mozambique, which, was, which were visited by Cyclone Idai. Chimanimani and Chipinge in eastern Zimbabwe, Biran surrounds in Mozambique, and Chikwawa and Sanje in Malawi's far south were worst hit during the cyclone. Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyama, who toured the three countries, hopes the donation will make a difference for those affected. We've, we've seen how, um, how much they value uh, the assistance, you know, uh, of Nigeria. And, and I think it's, um, it's helped to, you know, re-establish uh, Nigeria. You know, the, the expectations of our country are very high uh, in Africa. Uh, we're looked upon as uh, the big brother. Our intervention now, I think, has um, rekindled that and uh, given uh, them optimism uh, to see increased uh, Nigerian engagement uh, with, uh, with all the countries of this, uh, of this sub region In fact, when this uh, cyclone Idai happened, the Nigerians in Bulawayo, three quarters of them are professionals, contributed to the government and the people of Zimbabwe. Likewise, the Nigerians in Harare, they did the same too. Collectively, more than a million people were affected and hundreds killed during Cyclone Idai, which hit the three countries in March this year, closely followed by slightly weaker Cyclone Kenneth. From Harare, Zimbabwe, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. Now, Libyan National Army Commander Khalifa Haftar has travelled to Rome to meet Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte today. During the two-hour talks, Mr. Conte expressed his concern about the tensions in Libya and restated his appeal for a ceasefire to find a political solution to the ongoing crisis. Fighting between Libya's internationally recognized government and Libyan National Army forces continues about 40 kilometers from the capital, Tripoli. Forces loyal to Libya's government are defending the city against an offensive by the LNA, led by Khalifa Haftar, who accuses the administration of being controlled by terrorists, a charge it denies. Haftar is supported by Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, but denounced by the internationally recognized Prime Minister, Fayez Siraj, as an aspiring military dictator. 
A South African woman, Sare Kumalo, has become the first black African woman to scale Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain. Local media reports say this was her fourth attempt to reach the 8,850-meter summit, and she finally achieved her goal this morning. The 47-year-old business executive is on a quest to conquer the highest peaks on each continent. She has already climbed Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, one in Argentina, and Mount Mount Elbrus in Russia. Congratulations to her. The Vohibola Community Reserve in the last coastal forest on the eastern side of Madagascar. It is home to extraordinary and often endemic species, but like many forests in the country, it's under threat. Special groups and traditional rulers are now banding together to save the forest. Tour guide Cyril Dabe and all the volunteers are headed to Vohibola Forest for a routine morning patrol. Located on the east coast of Madagascar, along the shores of Pangolins Canal, Vohibola is the last primary forest found in the region. Madagascar is home to some rare exotic creatures such as one of the world's smallest amphibian, the stumpfair pygmy frog, which remain under threat as rampant logging continues to destroy both plant and animal in the country's forest. This forest is 2,000 hectares, and 500 hectares have already been destroyed either by fire or loggers. Faced with increasing threats to their livelihood, which largely depends on tourism, residents from surrounding villages are fighting to protect what is left of the forest by looking out for illegal activity in the forest. There is no more rain. Water resources are becoming insufficient. The land is getting poorer. We are already struggling to water our crops. As soon as I heard that there was a forest to protect, I immediately ran to join the ranks of the rangers. Young people of my age must understand that it's important to save the forests. More than 80% of the mammals in the world's fourth largest island can't be found anywhere else. And ecotourism is the backbone of the country's $390 million a year tourism industry. According to researchers, more than half of Voibola's forest has already been wiped out. Many in the community blame the deterioration of the forest on local authorities and rampant corruption. Through the Association to Protect for Ebola Forest, members and local residents have gone to court in the hope that they can save the forest. Well, that's it on the program today. Thanks for watching. I'm Teniola Shibowale. Bye for now.